has been good to us, has he not? And I want to enunciate that today. And I want to help somebody this morning who may be battling some sour emotions and some things that you're tunneling through in your life. Amen. I believe that this word <clears throat> is going to be a blessing to you. And I'm telling you, it's a right now word uh, because God gave it to me uh for the here and now uh I, I did not plan like we were going to be on a snow day uh and then to be honest with you i i had a totally different word for you this morning uh my my word was going in a totally different direction then this morning <clears throat> the lord brought me to a different place in space so i i know it's for us i know it's for the here and now and, and i want to make sure that it's a blessing so Shall, shall we pray? Is that okay? Uh, somebody says they can barely hear me. Tony, can you hear me? Let me make sure I'm yeah. good. Everybody else is thumbs up. So for that one individual, just turn up your computer volume, okay? Because that may be where you're running into a jam. Uh, Zoom, Zoom can be kind of tricky. Uh, you don't know if it's your computer or the person, but I have an absolutely full signal where I am. So uh, make sure you adjust your, your volume um, and we will go from there. Everybody's doing fabulous with their IT, generally speaking. Keep your Zooms on mute and that'll keep us from echoes. And uh, they're also gonna record this, this lesson today. And I believe it'd be a blessing to you. Let's pray. Father, we love you. <clears throat> we thank you for another opportunity to be in church. Lord, I'll be honest with you. I don't feel like we missed a thing. I don't. I, I feel like it's just been so rich. And here we are, five minutes to 11, going into the word of God. And, you know, then we'll raise our offering, Lord, and it will be a dynamic day. So, so we thank you for that. As Reggie prayed, thank you for technology, Lord. You know, we could have been stuck at home just reading our Bibles to ourselves. And, you know, that would have been okay. But you gave us technology so we can reach one another. So we love you for that. Thank you for the worship. It was so rich for your presence. Now, Lord, let the word of God just set in our hearts in such rich ways. And we'd be so careful to give you the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. <clears throat> we are going to go then to the book of Hosea, chapter three, verse number five. And many of you were there uh, at New Year's Eve service when I sort of preached what could be perceived as a part one of this. Um, and, you know, I wasn't going to be going back to this so soon, I don't think. But I believe the Lord impressed it upon my heart because every time I tried to go to today's message, I was just going to do the what's obvious, preach to you what I, what I had prepared for in-person worship. I just felt the pull of the spirit of God taking me in another direction. So uh, I want to give you this, and I think it's going to be a blessing. But the Bible says, afterward, the children of Israel shall return, which implies restoration. And I believe many of you need to understand that, that that's a big part of where you, you are in this season. Those of you who are compliant and honoring God and <clears throat> obeying God that this is a legitimate time of restoration. Uh, and, and the Bible says, you'll seek the Lord your God. They will seek the Lord their God and David their king. And they'll fear the Lord. <clears throat> so they'll have right perspectives on who God is in their life uh, and, and who, he, who he should be to them. And his goodness in the latter days. Or you could say, as a result, for their honor and fear for the Lord, they will experience his goodness in the latter days. So I want to talk this morning, and not too long, but I believe it's going to bless you. Take these scriptures down, meditate them. But today, yes, goodness in the latter days, but today I want to talk from the thought, perceiving the goodness of the Lord. Perceiving the goodness of the Lord. Now that, that word perception is so crucial to our lesson. Uh, because it's how you see a thing. It's, it's how you take something in that is so crucial to how you feel, how you will believe, how you will act. And, and we'll get there 
momentarily. But I want to talk about perceiving the goodness of the Lord. And this is a highly anointed word, so I want you to, to take this in. Um, the story was told of a man who stopped at a gas station. And some of you are old enough to remember when we used to have full service gas stations. And uh, at the full service gas station, somebody would come out and pump your gas for you. And they use one of those brushes with the rubber tip on the back and they they clean your window off. And that's during the days of full service. How many of y'all remember those days? Amen. When we had full service. We we get half service now, but we used to have have full service. Amen. Uh, full service meant that somebody was pumping your gas, no matter how cold or how hot it was. I remember days in Connecticut of getting full service and you pay a little bit more, but you could get full service. Well, the story was told of a man who kept seeing spots in his window. Uh, and he was being aggravated by that because his perception was skewed by the spots that he saw uh, every, every time he'd go out to drive. So he finally said, I'm gonna stop by the full service gas station <clears throat> and I'm gonna get these guys to clean my window. And the man came the, to clean his window and, 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 and he was scrubbing, scrubbing, scrubbing. And every time he would reach back to pull the spots off, the customer would call out the window and say, sir, with all due respect, you're not cleaning it well enough. The spots are still there. Uh, with all due respect, I don't see any change. You sure you got enough cleaning solution and water and, and, and soap and everything you need? What? What, what, what's going on? Because every time you try, I, I don't see any better. And after a time or two of that, three or four times, perhaps, the man, the customer who couldn't see clearly, his wife said to him, baby, give me your glasses. Uh, and he handed her his glasses. And she took a tissue paper and she began to scrub his glasses. And uh, she said, now try this on for size. And he put his glasses back on and all the spots had gone away. And the moral of the story is so many times we're looking from without to change our perspective when we really need to stop and look from within. See, you're, you're not down and out and oppressed or depressed today because of COVID, because it's snowing, because the world is skewed, because government is corrupt. You're not oppressed because uh, people are taking shots or not. You're not oppressed because of really anything that's going on around you. You are oppressed because of how you are seeing it. <laughs> it never had anything to do with the car window. Are y'all getting the moral of the story? It had everything to do with the man's lenses. And sometimes, y'all, we need to check our lenses in life. And, and you got the right man preaching this message today because I will tell you, and I, I boast only in the Lord, but I am guilty of having a positive framing on anything that goes on in life. It is very difficult to get a bad report out of me. I, I, I struggle to get one. You know, when, when I hear about something that did not go my way, my default setting is that God is doing something that something is unfolding bigger and greater than I thought. You know, uh, many of you know my, my best friend, obviously, Pastor Rondi. And I remember uh, when he and his family struggled through that first disappointment when the mortgage people told him they wouldn't be able to close on their house. And uh, that meant he had to unpack all his bags and all his boxes. And, and, and that was a disappointing day in context. But I remember when he called me, and, and, and the first thing I said to him, Braxton, is, oh, man, that means God's giving you a bigger, greater blessing. <laughs> that means you got a bigger house coming. That, that means you got more favor on your mortgage. Hey, guys, we got to have a no bad news clause about our life. So when we woke up this morning and it was snowing and icy and, 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 and all of the elements said, uh, church is a no-go. And this is just a small example. You know, I'll be honest with you. I didn't fold my tent, you know, uh, uh, after sorting through the details with a few leaders at four or five in the morning on what we were going to do. 
man, I rolled over and went back to sleep. Because in my eyes, that meant more rest. <laughs> That's what it meant. I, I think I kissed my wife and, and I, I went on back to sleep and, and got a little more rest and, you know, rested in God and uh, nothing about me is sitting here wondering when my power is going to go off. As a matter of fact, I decree if you'll receive it by faith, not one individual on this phone will lose power in the name of Jesus. Amen. Not one. We will walk through, we will have heat, we will have power, and we will have enjoyment. And that's just a lesser degree of what I'm teaching y'all. But whatever you're dealing with, you go to the doctor and they say, we don't like what we see. Your first response needs to be, I like what I see. <laughs> Come on, you get some bad news about a family member in the hospital and they say, it doesn't look good. Your response ought to be, I'm not looking at what you're looking at. Come on, somebody. <laughs> I'm not paying attention to what you pay attention. Hallelujah. I look not at the things that are seen because the things that are seen are temporal. But I look at the things that are not seen because the things that are not seen are eternal. In 2 Corinthians 5 and 7, we walk by faith, baby, and not by sight. There's nothing in the natural that I see that governs how I feel, how I make a decision, what I do next. I rely on my spirit, man, and I always have godly perspective on outcomes. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's the revelation. That's the revelation. You didn't get your scholarship. It didn't come through this time, quote unquote. Well, the scholarship wasn't your source the whole time. God is your source. <laughs> God is your supply. Come on, Philippians 4.19 didn't go out of style because you didn't get your money. Come on. It is still applicable to today and he will supply all my needs according to his riches and glory. And devil, you just gave me another semester to get more smarter. You gave me another semester to recover. You gave me another semester to get on track with what I'm gonna do. And I just missed the storm that you had coming my way because for believers, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. I wish I had six witnesses. Y'all going to make me shout in my office. I'm telling you, the power of God didn't stop with your challenge. <laughs> Hallelujah. It didn't stop. And so we got to start perceiving goodness. We, we got to cleanse our lens. And then, as Pop Gould said, we got to get off this earth. You know, 1 Corinthians 5, 19, put it on the screen, Tony. You got it. But 1 Corinthians 5, 19 says it so well. It says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. If this is the only place that we can hope in Christ, the only place we can look forward to having victory, we're of all men most miserable anyway. Hey, guys, newsflash, we ought to have heavenly affection. We ought to be looking forward to the rapture. We ought to be looking forward to the return of Christ. We, everything we experience here ought to be temporary. It, it, it ought to be just a, a passing moment anyway. Every theme park that I went to that was exciting at first as a child, by the end of the day, it became ex exorbitantly boring. Come on. Once you rode a few roller coasters, ate a few pretzels, and had a couple of ice cream cones, it was hot and you were ready to go. Come on. Those are all paper mache experiences. Every new car that I got, what I noticed was within three to four months, it got old. It was just a car. My wife and I bought brand new vehicles, both of us in 2019. And what's so interesting is both Lincoln and Mercedes have come out with newer versions than what we have now. <laughs> Our versions, according to their standard, are the inferior model. But I want to talk to you about a goal that will not go blemish. I want to talk to you about a relationship that will not tarnish. I want to talk to you about when you fall in love with God, his ways, his precepts. Come on, somebody. Do you know it will never grow old? And so we need to perfect that. We need to put our hope and our relationship back in Christ, back in the love of God back in his favor and abundance in our life and how he dodes on us and relates to us. Somebody say amen. And as we segue to the next portion of this message, very good, Tony, because Jesus was the master of perception. You were, you were spot on with that scripture. John 11 and 11 
Notice how Jesus perceived of Lazarus' death over in John 11 and 11. I want you to look at a few scriptures. He said, these things he said, after that, he said to them, he said, our friend Lazarus sleeps, <laughs> but I go that I might wake him up. <laughs> Isn't that powerful? Jesus never saw this man who was dead for four days as dead. He saw him as sleep. Jesus was the master of perception. How do you see your stuff in life? How do you see the difficulties? How do you see the things that <clears throat> are not quite what you want them to be yet? They hadn't closed yet. They hadn't come into fruition yet. You know, Jesus never saw Lazarus as dead. As a matter of fact, it wasn't until around verse number 14, because his disciples were so carnal that he had to finally say, hey, guys, yes, he's dead, but I'm trying to get you to understand the faith principle. I don't see him or perceive him as dead. I only perceive him as sleep. That's enough to prove our point. But Luke 8, 49 through 52, come on, let's look at that. Because <clears throat> he never saw Jairus' daughter as dead. Bible says, while he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house saying to him, Jairus, your daughter is dead. Don't trouble Jesus anymore. You know, don't bother him about coming to your house anymore. You know? Anybody ever been there to where everybody else wants you to move on from the solution? But you know, on the inside, God's got a better outcome than what you've seen so far. You know that you've not seen the end of the story. <laughs> Amen. Don't stop in the middle. Hallelujah. There was an old song that said, please be patient with me. God is not through with me yet. I hadn't seen the end of this story yet. I'm not ready to quit. Amen. Don't put my do not resuscitate in the file. Amen. Keep resuscitating me because I'm not ready to die yet with long life. He will satisfy me. Psalm 91, 16. I'm not ready to die on my vision. Well, everybody around him was ready to die on the vision. But look at verse number 50. And he said, when Jesus heard it, he answered him saying, fear not. Altry, he said, only believe because she shall be made whole. Oh, Paul's right there, experiencing the goodness of the Lord in the latter days. Everybody on this home, on this phone, on this Zoom needs to get a revelation of the fact that you shall be made whole. All of the obedient, all of the godly, all which is all of the upstanding. I shall be made whole. You know, I'm broken right now, but but if I stay with God, hallelujah. Come on, say Quran. If I do it God's way. I shall be made whole. There, there's an old song that we used to sing. It said, there's a bright side somewhere. There, there is bigger, there is better, there, there is greater than, than what I see right now. And I sense an anointing on that, that phrase. And, and you need to say it out loud. I shall be made whole. I, I'm not everything I want to be today. I hadn't arrived yet. I still got a little fragmentation to me. I'm still coming around some corners. But if I stay with God, if I don't lead Jesus, I shall be made whole. Now, Jairus had an option. He could have left Jesus. He could have said, you know what? They're right, Jesus. Never mind. You took too much time on the woman with the issue of blood. I'm just going to go on home now and bury my daughter. I'm just going to take her down to the funeral home, let them embalm her. But he didn't do that. He stayed with the source. And see, guys, when you get in a pickle, don't leave the source. Don't start going with the world. Don't start going with the world's outlets, with the world's information. Stay with the source. That's one of the reasons why I never got uptight about taking shots and, and getting into what the world was doing. And, and, and my God, a shot turned into two shots, which turned into six pills, which turned into this, turned into that. I, I, never, I never got with the world's remedy. The whole time I stayed with the source. When I got an itchy throat, I still stayed with the source because it's the source that heals me anyway. Are y'all getting the revelation? So stay with the source is what I'm trying to teach you today. All right? That we go all the way with God because I shall be made what? Oh, well, let's see what happened in verse number 51 and 52. This is so good. And he came into the house and he didn't allow anyone to go in. He didn't take anyone that was in unbelief. You know, he didn't let everybody run with him. He only allowed the boys that he knew had fire on them. 
Peter, James, and John. You know, Yolanda, when he when, when you're being uh, completely healed of cancer, you know, you, you don't let everybody in on every every report you get from the doctor. You don't get everybody's opinion about what they think and how it should should look. And that's why the Lord completely healed, healed your body, because you didn't go with everybody's opinion. You stayed with the Peter, the James and the Johns. You, you got around other folk that believed. Hallelujah. And this is my position on my ability to believe. I never let anybody else dictate my outcomes because guess what? It's my life in me. Why do I got to consult you on whether or not I should get on life support? You let me decide if I want to be on life support. You, you let me decide if I want to give up on believing God to have a baby. We got a new uh, member couple on the line right now that because they did not give up, it took them seven years, seven years, but they did not give up. Their baby is due any day now. <laughs> and I pray the Lord have mercy and that they don't decide to come right now because I don't want my man to have to dig out some snow. <laughs> Amen. But you got to believe. You got to believe. You got to hope against hope. You got to do what Sarah do. You got to judge God faithful. Everything I got up before the Lord, I judge him faithful. I judge him capable. You know, I'm thanking God for all the money that's coming in and all that kind of good stuff to do all of our, our building projects. But this is going to blow your mind. I judge God so faithful. You know what I was doing last night? Tony, take the scripture down for a second so I could look at their faces. You know what I was doing last night? I was rubbing my finger over some of the carpet swatches that I plan to put in some of our new venues. I already started talking to the carpet man and I told him drop off some carpet. And so last night I was rubbing my hand over some swatches because I'm not waiting until I get all the resources. I judge them faithful. I may as well start picking stuff right now. I wish I had some help. I judge them faithful. I may as well start acting like it right now. I may as well start putting down some deposits right now because I judge God faithful. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. You judge him faithful. He's the faithful God. He keeps his promises to a thousand generations. I believe that's Deuteronomy 7 and 9 or something like that. He's a faithful God. You meditate it. You study it. Find it. He's faithful. Amen? Go get some carpet swatches. I know I got some kingdom buildings coming this year, so I got some carpet swatches. Amen? I, I'm rubbing my hand. When I get off this call today, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go up to that room where those swatches are, and, 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 and BT and Carol, with that smile that y'all got right there, I'm going to take that same smile and I'm going to rub over some of that carpet. I'm just going to rub on it. And I'm just, amen. I'm going to walk around the house, Dave and Shantae, you know, Sister Monique, and I'm just going to rub on that, them swatches. Hallelujah. Then I'm going to eat some vegetables, uh, a kiva. And then what you going to do this afternoon? Watch the playoffs and relax my nerves. Y'all ain't saying nothing. Hallelujah. <laughs> I said, well, relax my nerves and watch the playoffs and look forward to the goodness of the Lord and believe that by this time tomorrow, somebody send me a $5 million check. I wish I had a chance, a witness in here that by this time tomorrow, my life will change for the better. Amen. Because I judge them faithful. I don't perceive of things the same way as everybody. And you got to do that. If you believe in God, you got to order some swatches. You got to judge them faithful. You getting ready to come out of the hospital, you know, send out an Uber <laughs> and tell them, get ready, to come pick you up. <laughs> Do you need it right now? No, just schedule it. Cause in a minute, I'm gonna send you the confirmation that I'm ready to go home. I wish I had some help in here. If you know you're coming off of oxygen, start breathing like you got oxygen, even when you got it in your nose. Cause you know that God is faithful. I wish I was in church, but I am. <laughs> Amen. And look at verse number 52 of the text, Rachel. Now all who wept and mourned for her, but he said, don't weep, First Lady Rogers, because she's not dead, but sleeping. Perception. How did Jesus perceive of everything he faced as better than what it looked like, as made whole? He didn't even perceive of the cross 
the way you think he perceived of it. Hebrews 12 says, for the joy that was set before him. So he always was looking past the cross, mom. He, he never looked at the cross like it was. He saw more than the cross. He saw getting up. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that's a question I have for you today. Do you see getting up? Amen. I don't know where you are right now, what you're going through, what you're dealing with, but do you see getting up? Amen. I see better than where I am right now. Man, let me move on because I know y'all ready to get off this line. But I wish I had somebody that would shout hallelujah that knows God is on the move. Goodness in the latter days. Now, I want to give you this because, you know, the Lord unloaded these points to me and he gave them to me in a jiffy. I told you, he, he started, you know, Candace talking to me this morning. You know, Lord just, he derailed me. You know, this wasn't the message I had all week to prepare. He gave, gave it to me uh, this morning, about 30 minutes. And, and, and he gave me this vetting plan that, that you all need to have, amen, so that you can perceive goodness in the latter days. So I want to give this to you. Perceiving goodness in the latter days will require the following assessment of yourself. Of yourself. Number one. Number one, how are you believing in the last days? How are you believing? That is, what are you believing to see? Now, before we give them the next points, Tony, put Psalm 27, 13 up there through 14, because that's a very important point. David said, I would have fainted. I would have fainted. I would have given up unless I had believed to see. Kendra, how was David believing? He was believing to see. Are y'all still with me? He was believing to see what? What are we talking about? He was believing to see goodness. So the first question you got to ask yourself is, how are you believing in the last days? See, CNN and everybody else, CDC, all the C's will tell you how awful things are all the time. But you got to be predetermined that you believe to see better. You believe to see goodness. I wake up every day with my neck stuck out with expectation of goodness. And not just in the culture, but in my own life, in the things that I got up before the Lord. I believe that this is a week of goodness. I believe to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Not when I get to heaven, y'all. If all we have is hard days up ahead, then this scripture is inaccurate. But the Bible said we would see goodness in the land of the living. So the world is going under, but the believer ought to believe to see goodness in this land. And while you're believing to see it, you just wait on the Lord and, and be of good courage and he will strengthen your heart. Wait, I see on the Lord. So that moves into the second assessment you got to give yourself, which is not only how are you believing, what are you believing for, or how are you believing is the real question. But he said, wait on the Lord and be of good courage, which implies how are you feeling in the last days? Yes, put that point up there, please. How are you feeling in the last days and add this point to it tony has it up there for you and are you regulating your feelings because see that's the problem with most believers their feelings regulate them they're not regulating their feelings all right how i'm believing ought to turn into a good feeling at some point now we don't walk by feelings we walk by what class faith but at a certain point, you ought to be able to feel good, watch how I say this, as a result of your faith, which is bubbling over. Romans 15 says uh, that we're bubbling over with the joy and peace in believing. See, there becomes joy and peace in believing. So when I go and get some carpet and start filling swatches and engage vendors about these buildings that I'm acquiring this year, I'm doing that because I'm feeling good about it. <clears throat> I'm feeling good about what God is up to. I'm looking forward to. Man, if I knew I had a job coming, Braxton, you know, uh, I, I'd be trying some suits on. I sure would. I'd get fully, I'd get fully dressed. I, 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 I'd be ready. Amen. 
It'd be my disposition because I'm feeling good about this. I, 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 all of me is on it, it's in it. And, and feelings do sort of predicate or at least work in alignment y'all with desire, desire. I, I desire it, I'm believing for it. We went out on evangelism yesterday and it was like, hey, I'm feeling like we're gonna win some souls. And some people want some souls, right? How are you feeling, okay? And where do you get that from? Because the world is dark. John 16, 33 says, these things I have spoken to you that in, in me, you may have peace. He said in the world, you will have what? Tribulation. But watch this, the world ought not dictate our feelings, but be of what? Good cheer. Now don't read that too fast. Cause what is cheer class? Cheer is a feeling. Cheer is not even faith. It's not. You ought to write that down. The Bible commands you to feel good. For a believer to be down and out and depressed and oppressed and boxed in, come on, because you, you, you hadn't met your husband yet, you hadn't won a disciple yet, you hadn't gotten a, that's not biblical. Amen. No, no. The Bible says he was going to give to us his peace in this world. He said, in me, you would have peace. So if you stay in me, Jairus, even though things aren't looking good for your daughter, you stay in me, you'll have peace. And in this world, I want you to, to know you'll have tribulation, but here's the feelings word, but be of good cheer. Purposely cheer up. I command my soul to rejoice and I'm happy in Jesus. Amen. And I'm not just talking about a snow day anyway, either. This is easy. I'm talking about real trials in life. I'm talking about the stuff you're dealing with. No, I'm of good cheer. No, I'm happy. Things are bright. Hallelujah. Y'all still with me? So number one, how are you believing in the last day? Number two, how are you feeling in the last days? And then number three, what are you saying in the last days? You got to assess that. Are you still with me, church? You got to assess that. What are you saying in the last days? And, and I want you to see it in Romans 8 and 31 on this one and, and take these notes and meditate them. The, the Bible says, what shall we then say to these things? <laughs> to what things? Whatever things are going on in your life, good, bad, or indifferent. <laughs> what shall we say to these things? Rhetorical question. I'll tell you what you should take, say to these things. Y'all know that's a question you don't have to answer. If God be for us, who can be against us? So, so what should I say to these things, Sorelia? I should say, if God be for me, who can be against me? Mm -hmm. No matter what's going on in my life, that's what I ought to be saying. I ought to be saying, if God be for me, who can be against me? Man, I know if you like me, boy, I think after this call, I'm just going to shout. As a matter of fact, I recommend when you get out, out of church today, do what the Rogers going to do. We're going to turn some shouting music on in the family room, and we're just going to dance about these principles. That's what I'm going to do. As soon as I get done, I'm going out there, me, Christian, we're going to leap and jump. Because, y'all, the devil can't do a thing with you if he can't have your mouth. <laughs> Hallelujah. He needs your mouth. But if you say to these things, if God be for me, who can be against me? The devil's got to back off. He's the who. <laughs> you got one key enemy, and that's the devil. But he can't do a thing with you if you would say the right thing to these things. Look at it again. What shall we say to these things? See, not only... Did Jesus perceive Lazarus and Jairus' daughter as not being dead? But notice in both cases, he said they're not dead, but sleeping. Did he not, Karina? That's what he said. He said, now look here, um, y'all chill out because these people ain't dead. They, ju they just sleep. And that's why the Bible says, put away from you a forward mouth a mouth that just speaks all kinds of stuff, just vanities, just saying the first thing that comes to your mind. No, 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 no. What shall we say to these things? What do we do in dilemmas? What's our next step? 
I'll never forget, we had a baptism at the church. And, you know, we arrived that day, pool was nice and hot, everything working like it's supposed to. We get out there that day, man, and, it, and it's icy cold. The heater had broke and all kinds of stuff. And, and you know, this was one of them days where we had some, those real new converts, them folk who had really come out the world and they was ready to be baptized. Their families were going, getting ready to come in a couple of hours. Well, you know what I told Brother Reese and he did a darn good job. In so many words, I said, well, hey, well, what are we going to say to these things? i tell you what, I think we got some commercial kitchens and some hot waters and big pots. What do we say to these things? We say we got a solution. And if people could be baptized in Chile, Jordan, I think they can be baptized in lukewarm kingdom pool. Come on, somebody. What you going to say? What you going to do with your obstacle? <laughs> and watch this. Everybody that got baptized came out the pool shouting. The anointing fell on them. Hallelujah. The power of God came. They came out talking in tongues. And it wasn't because they were cold either. It's because the Holy Ghost can warm some stuff up and take care of stuff that you can't take care of if you'll just trust God and say the right thing when you're at an obstacle. Somebody shout hallelujah. <laughs> One girl came out shouting so hard we couldn't even hold it. Amen. What you going to say to these things? Amen. And whatever you're dealing with, you got to be predetermined that my confidence is in the, watch how I say this team, the goodness of the Lord. I expect goodness. The Bible says of Ezra and Nehemiah that the good hand of God was on. And you need to wake up every day saying, man, the good hand of God is on me. <laughs> Hallelujah. You hear where I'm coming from, baby. I said, the good hand of God is on me. Man, I'm leaving. Goodness and mercy follows me all the days of my life, and I'll dwell in the house of the Lord. The goodness of the Lord, it, his, his good hand is on me. It's on me. That's the revelation of what shall we say to these things. What shall we say? I'm almost done to, down to, to, to my last point. What are you saying in the last days? <clears throat> but then you could guess where we're going. But then what are you doing in the last days? Y'all screenshot those points? They're free on God. They came straight from heaven this morning. What, what are you doing in the last days? What are you doing, you know? Because see, keep it up there, Tony. I, 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 if I'm believing, then in a minute, my faith is going to interpret into a feeling because I'm a regu regulator. I'm going to practice the three C's. I'm going to catch it. If it's negative, I'm going to cast it down and I'm going to consume it. Now, I ain't moping all over the house talking about I'm upset because I ain't met nobody yet. That's the devil. Hey, Amen. You get in your assignment, you're going to meet somebody. I'm upset because I hadn't got a soul. Just get one. Come above it. Get bigger. Hey, Amen. Your feelings. I, you know, I, I really want to get back active in the church, you know. I, I don't want to be sitting down anymore. Okay, do the hard work you need to do. Solve it. Get strong on yourself. Those of you who were in that minister's class yesterday, get very honest with yourself. What will it take for me to be used in the kingdom of God? And come forth, and we'll put you back up. Ain't no problem. Shucks, we need workers. Amen. God loves you, and I love you too. Get over it. And I told you just like that, that, that example in the beginning, that guy was looking through the... To, through the car window instead of looking at his own glasses. That's the thing that was jacking him up. And most people who can't look at themselves never succeed in life. Most people who don't have a, a healthy assessment of self cannot succeed in life. They never stop long enough to say, well, what about me though? Who's the common denominator in my life? If all the stuff I'm trying is coming to naught, who, who's the common denominator? You know, at a certain point, I can't blame all of you for what's not working in my life. You know, I got to say to myself, hey, Gabe, and I don't call myself Pastor Gabe. I call myself Gabe. I, hey, buddy, what, what you doing, man? What you going to do different this year? You know, if I didn't get my books out last year like I wanted to, that would have been your fault. I needed to buckle down and get my book out, whatever else. 
Got a new mini book coming out uh, for the leadership conference, man. Hey, I, I, I got I to gotta tap in and get my stuff done. You know, if my business isn't growing the way I want it to grow, I, I, I got to clean my glasses. This is better than business, though. If my marriage ain't working the way I want it to work, it, it might not be Sister Stephanie, First Lady Rogers. It, it might be me. I might have the wrong disposition. You know, some of you parenting your kids, let me do a little family preaching, and, and, and your kids can't get along with you. None, none of your kids. Now, you got 12 kids, and none of them get along with you? See, to me, if you, was, if you was parenting right, you'd at least have six out of the 12. But if all 12 of them fell out with you, come on. You got to do some self-assessment, baby. You might have a you might have an attitude problem. They'd be like, boy, I hate going to mama. Man, every time I talk to dad, he, no, you got to fix that. Amen. I got derailed. Y'all stay with me. Y'all with me? What are you doing in the last days? James 122, you know it by heart. What are we doing? But we are doers of the word. Everybody say this. I'm, I'm doing the word. Come on, say it again. I'm doing the word. Come on, say it this way. The only thing I'm doing is the word of God. That's so profound, y'all. I'm not just going to be on this rich Zoom today and have worship and praise and what a great service we have had and not leave here and do something about it. I'm going to do what my pastor doing. He's going to rub some carpet after this call and shout. And I'm going to do it too, y'all. I'm not just saying that for form and fashion. I'm going to dance over the victory. I don't care how I feel. And I'm going to touch my carpet. And I'm sure First Lady got some veggies. Amen. And I, yeah, Angie, we doing the work. That's the only thing I'm doing. And if I had time, I'd take you back to the first point uh, or the third point, which, which is what are you saying? And Matthew 8 and 8 says, speak the word only. So James 1 and 22 tells me not to just be a hearer of the word, but to be a doer of the word. But Matthew 8 and 8 told me, but then speak the word only. So if the only thing I'm saying is the word and the only thing that I'm doing is the word, Revelation knowledge, I preached this at the faith conference a year or two ago. At a certain point, the word is going to be made flesh and dwell among you. <laughs> Glory to God. Because that's the only thing you do. People wonder why some people have victory all the time. Because the only thing they do is speak and say. The only thing I do is speak and say the word. And at a certain point, the word is going to be made flesh. Amen. Amen. You keep saying, you keep saying, you keep speaking, you keep doing. It's going to come to pass. You know, you, your, your pastor is going to have his own jet. You know why? Because I got to get around the country real fast. I do. So I'm going to be speaking that and saying that. For what? To plant churches and to do the will of the Father as he has called us to do it. And that's the only thing I'm going to do. I'm going to speak it and say it till it comes to pass. Because I don't want it for my own no gain, no way. I, I want it for the kingdom of God. I travel frequently enough. Amen. Right? Yeah, so that's the only thing I'm going to speak. And it's going to come to pass. My mission building, you know, the county has a crisis right now of folk who have nowhere to go because of how cold it is. Now, can you imagine, and Kimra's not in her head, she works for the county. Can you imagine having slept outside last night? I mean, that is inhumane, inhumane. So no, I'm telling you, we are going to acquire a missions building and the whole bottom floor of that building is going to be loaded with cots and people are going to be able to sleep in heat. And we're going to minister to them and, and, and give them soup and oatmeal and, and, and minister the gospel. And many of you can volunteer down there. I'm going to do it too. I'll be down there. That's what I'm saying. What, what am I speaking? It's only kingdom stuff. It's for the good of the kingdom, right? Now you get kingdom driven. Guess what? You're going to know that our message last Sunday, you're going to build your house out of the same lumber. Because <laughs> as God was blessing Nehemiah with letters, Nehemiah 2, 7 through 8, to build the wall, 
the governor, y'all remember that? The king of that, of that province. He also gave him letter and resources to build his own house out of the same lumber. Same thing happened to Solomon. Solomon builds the temple for God. Go look it up in Chronicles. And the Bible says out of the same stuff, and I'm teaching him, it teaches, and I paraphrase, he built his own house. He closes on the temple and his house. Gets it all done. God has no problem with you having things and enjoying and being blessed and being prosperous and, and being favored. And, you know, it, 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 it's like your pastor, man. I'm just telling you, like, I'm, I'm a kid in a candy store. I'm up here with, you know, 150 people approximately having a Bible study. I'm in my office here at home and four beautiful, healthy children, a gorgeous wife and a wonderful, lovely home. And, you know, after this, I will... I will go and dance and shout, but man, then we're going to chill out and kids, you know, man, go watch a little movie or whatever. And God has no problem with that stuff. Amen. I might watch another word today because see some people watch movies for fun. I watch the word for fun. I, amen. When I watch the word, I'd be like, boy, that's good. I, I can get some popcorn in a, in a, in a juice and watch the word, which by the way, you can't eat a snack of popcorn on this fast. Just make sure it's not that that thick caramel stuff, y'all. Y'all get out of the boxes. Y'all know what I'm talking about that poppycock stuff with all the talking about you fasting, and then you got you got the butter toffee caramel chocolate brand because you just believe in God to get your flesh under subjection. No, you ain't. Like Reggie said, eating cracker jack, talking about you going up before the Lord. You ain't ready to go up before the Lord. You got the sweetest kettle that they got. You ain't got the, the light one. You got the sweetest one they got. You ain't ready. Eating Fruit Loops and Apple Jacks and carrying on talking about, he said we could eat corn. That ain't the kind of corn I'm talking about. And you know it ain't. So get right. Okay. Well, what are you doing? Ain't that right, Kiva? Kiva know I'm right. I see Kiva out there. That's, hey, Keisha, that's what I'm talking about, y'all. Hey, we winning, right? This is a good life. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. All right, let's close this out, man. So let, let's um understand three quick scriptures, maybe four, and then we'll, we'll stop for the day. Is that okay? That'll be enough. I got my iPad right here, man, and I want you to hear this. Because, see, you're not going down with the world. You're going up. You're a winner in Jesus' name. Amen. And God wants you to have goodness. So will you assess yourself on those four things? Very important. Tony, put all four points up there. <clears throat> How are you believing? How are you feeling? And are you regulating those feelings? What are you saying in the last days? And what are you doing? And before we close, look at this. <clears throat> and... Psalm 145 and 9, it says, the Lord is good to all. Are you one of the all? Of course you are. And his tender mercies are over all his works. Look at uh, Pro, uh, Psalm 31 and 19. Write these scriptures down. I, I'm, I'm closing. Um, how great is the goodness you have stored up <laughs> for those who fear you. Hallelujah. And y'all remember this? You lavish it on them who come to you for protection. He's going to lavish his goodness on you, blessing them right before the watching world. The world has all kinds of stuff going on, but God said, I'm going to lavish it on you right in the midst of this economy, right in the midst of what's going on. Baby, don't you start looking forward to, to going under in a Great Depression. Not you. Amen. Get that free. Pay your bills off. Come on. We do all that kind of good stuff. But understand but that, that, that our God is good, and he stored some stuff up. He positioned us for these times. He knew these times were coming. <laughs> and he's a good father. The Bible says a good man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. Woo, Jesus. You all lift your hand and say, I'm one of the children. I know that's bad English, but I'm one of the children. Hallelujah. He's left an inheritance for me. He stored it up. 
Amen. He's a good God, Braxton. Psalm 119, 68, 68 and that's enough for today. <clears throat> and listen to how the psalmist talks to God. He says, you are good and do good. Not only are you a good God, but you do good with your goodness. See, it's one thing to be a millionaire and be stingy. But when you're a millionaire and you're ready to pass out some money, hallelujah, your father is a good God and he's ready to pass out goodness. <laughs> he, he's loaded with love and he's ready to pass out love. Hallelujah. He's loaded with favor and he's ready to pass out favor. And I'm telling you, church, <clears throat> clear my throat. It's, it's happening. It's happening right now. You're in the midst of one of the greatest outpourings of the last day. Y'all remember we were part of the eventually? He said eventually it makes its hands into the way into the hands of, of the righteous. Yeah, the wealth of the wicked eventually makes its hand, way into the hands of the righteous. Somebody put that scripture in the chat so people could have it. Eventually it's here. It's our turn, y'all. God is ready for his goodness to be spread out. You, you, you are good. You do good. Teach me your statues. Get ready. Amen. Somebody say eventually has come. Yeah. See if I, I can find something for y'all because you need to understand it, it's, it's not in the great getting up morning. Amen. That's Proverbs 13, 22. It says a good man leaves an inheritance of moral stability and goodness to his children's children. And the wealth of the sinner finds its way eventually into the hands of the righteous for whom it was laid up for. Hey, y'all, eventually is here. Eventually it's come. And that's good news. So assess yourself on that. Believe for that. Believe that, um, man, God is on the move. God is good. If I honor him, Hallelujah. If I'll obey him, he'll bless me. And all I need to do is, is I need to adjust my perception. You know, uh, I, I'm not making fun of anybody you know that who wears glasses. There's nothing wrong with glasses, but I want you to take your make-believe glasses off for a second and, you know, fog them up a little bit. You, you know how you do when you don't have anything. And then just take, take, take a make-believe tissue and, and just just clean your make-believe glasses just just clean them off clean your spiritual glasses all right all right now blow them off one more good time and put the right perception on hallelujah hallelujah can we worship god right there hallelujah. oh god we worship you we praise hallelujah. you for right perspectives <laughs> amen clean lenses in the name of jesus now, Father, I pray for my spiritual children this morning, because most of them up here are members. Um, and so you allow me to father them in the spirit. And Lord, I, I cover them in prayer today that this message would not only resonate, but that it would permeate. It get down on the inside. Even my children, God, my Lauren's God, who who got dressed for church, my gay juniors and Christians and <clears throat> My, my Stevens, Lord, and, and not just in my house, but my Kaya's and Collins and, and all my youth and kids that I know saw and sat and listened to pastor, Lord, I, I pray, God, that it would just do something for them, too, that they have a good, good father, that we have a good, good father. God, you love us. And, and, and for those of us who have obeyed you, you're not walking around grouchy and grumpy either. You want to bless us, God. I, I, I have personally been enamored by your blessing, God, just by how you smile on me all the time. You're so good. You know, I, I'm, I'm like another preacher I heard who said it this way. Sometimes I feel like I'm your favorite son because <laughs> you're always doing something for me, God. So, Father, I want to thank you for that. And I cover your people now in prayer that these would just this would just be a great day. You know, tomorrow's Martin Luther King Day, I believe, and Lord, many have the day off, and some work from home anyway, or will have a snow day. 
And Lord, let them just to have so much peace. Lord, a little yogurt and 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 uh and a smile in their Bible and just just be enamored by your presence and the relationship with you. I thank you for open doors. I thank you for the finances, the abundance. I thank you for the overflow in our life. And God, we give you glory, honor, and praise for good success and all that we endeavor to do. In Jesus' name, amen. If you, if you, if, if you got a second, just thank them, thank them, thank them. We're going to be letting you go here momentarily, <clears throat> but just thank them. Thank them, thank them, thank them. Hallelujah. Yep, I got you, dear. Amen. We love you, Lord. We praise you, and we thank you for your goodness. Amen. Well, what a rich worship experience. i tell you what I want to do right now, and I don't want you to leave me. Um, I would like to raise our offering uh, because uh, God is so good. He's so favorable. Um, and, and I believe what an opportunity to give. Um, I'm not concerned about this at least at, at, at the, in the least because I know the people of God and how many of y'all know at KCC, a snow day don't mean a non-tithing day. Amen. We are givers. Amen. We give and I'm going to challenge you and I'm going to challenge you with something that I myself am going to do. Uh, I'm going to give more today than I would have given. Uh, in the spirit of God, his goodness, his faithfulness. And uh, so in that spirit, we're going to prepare to give. He's a good God. And y'all, when I say that stuff, I'm not just saying it to, to excite you either. I, I, I'm really going to do that. I'm, I'm really going to give more today than I would have give, given uh, if I were in person. Because two things. Number one, I'm not saying the snow was the devil anyway, but how many of y'all know the devil don't stop nothing? How many of y'all know worship was rich today? Amen. This was an awesome experience. And I'm going to tell you something. Y'all keep worshiping like that. I might do like some of these other pastors, just transition home, man. I, I don't know. I just ain't no sense in me putting on no three-piece suit if it's going to be this good. Just, just no, no. I see all the no's, so never mind. We better, John, Shanita, we better keep coming. What do you think? We better keep coming to church. I don't think we better get on the Zoom. I think we're doing it right. Amen. But um, that was some rich worship. <clears throat> and I want to read this scripture to you for offering exhortation. Because, y'all, we're not cutting corners because we're on the Zoom. We in church. Amen. Listen to this offering exhortation, Fernando. Nehemiah 9.29 says, 40 years you sustained them in the wilderness so that they lacked nothing. Their clothes did not wear out and their feet did not swell. He said for 40 years, that's your offer and exhortation. You kept them in the wilderness and they lacked nothing. Nehemiah 9 and 21, 40 years, kept them in the wilderness. And I like it. New King James Version says, and they lack nothing. They didn't lack a thing. They had everything they needed. If God could keep them in the wilderness for 40 years, by golly, he could keep us in the midst of COVID and anything else going on in this world because he's the God that keeps his people and will lack nothing. We believe we receive that we lack nothing in Jesus' name. And we exemplify that through our giving today in the name of Jesus. All right, don't leave. We're going to um, prepare to give our offering. Let me rewind a little bit. If you're on this Zoom and you don't know Jesus is Lord, <clears throat> you need to accept him as Lord in your life or you wanna be filled with the Holy Ghost, you can accept him right now. You can accept him. They got little reaction tabs down here. And I know it's a lot of people up here but if you'll just go to your reaction tab and you just raise your hand like I just did, it'll come up. Tony's observing and we'll have somebody call you at home and literally lead you to the Lord right now. When we be filled with the Holy Ghost, we get you filled right now. Amen. 
We decree health and healing to everybody's body, no pain, no issue, no suffering in your body. Isaiah 53 and five, he was wounded for your transgression, bruised for your iniquities, chastised when your peace was upon Jesus. And with his stripes, you are healed. Satan in the name of Jesus, you can't have any place in the life of God's people today or this week. We call him well and whole in Jesus name, amen. So let's do it like we do it at church. I see a hand up there, uh, Fallen L, Tony, please locate that person. Um, let's get a DP calling them right now. They will lead you to the Lord right now. Forgive me if I'm not saying your name right, but uh, I believe it's Fallen L. Let's have Sister Pam <clears throat> outreach that individual. Uh, Fallen L, if you will, um, send your number. How would you do that, Tony? You're the host. Can they send it to you privately? Yes, sir. I just sent you a message so you can respond back to that. Okay. So if you'll do that, Sister uh, Pam will call you and lead you to the Lord. Let's clap our hand for the one person that gave their heart to the Lord today. That's great. Praise God. It's not a waste of time, y'all. What you're doing is very, very good. God bless you. If this message has been a blessing to you and you would like to give, you may text to give by using the instructions displayed on the screen. For additional giving options, you may visit our website at kingdomchristianchurch.org under the Give tab. As always, remember, Jesus is coming back real soon.